Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com, and today I'm going to be showing you how to properly set up, install, and configure the Cache Enabler plugin by KeyCDN. Cache Enabler is a free, simple page caching plugin in WordPress. And while there are not many options, depending on your site's configuration, you might be able to tweak it to get slightly better results. The Cache Enabler plugin, though, is an incredibly basic plugin, and thus you would need to use it in conjunction with an asset optimization plugin, such as Auto Optimize or Fast Velocity Minify, both of which will be covered in another video. To start, though, you're going to go to the Plugins menu, click Add New, and then just type in the name Cache Enabler. It'll appear. Install now and activate. The cache enabler settings panel is incredibly basic, but with this, I'm going to go show, go through all the options and explain what they do. This particular website is running the newspaper theme by tag div, which you can see here. And I'll be showing you in the code what the effect is for each of the settings. So the cache expiry, this is how long a page will remain cached in HTML. If you have a site that doesn't receive a lot of updates and you publish maybe a post a week or a post a month, the default expiry of zero is probably fine. If you use a plugin like Contact Form 7 or another plugin that makes use of nonces, you will want to set the cache expiry to 10 hours. This is because nonces in WordPress have a default expiration time of 12 hours. So you want to make sure the cache is purged and regenerated to make sure that nonces remain functioning. So I'm going to set this to 10 hours. We then have the cache behavior. So you can enable clear the complete cache if a new post has been published instead of only the home page cache. This is a good option to have. This is primarily going to help you if your website has, say, a dedicated blog page or you make use of author archives category archives, tag archives, etc. If you don't purge the entire cache, what will happen is if your expiry is 10 hours and you published a new post, you may not see that post on your blog page or your archive pages until the entire cache has expired and needs to be recreated. So I highly recommend this option is enabled to maintain a consistent user experience. Clear the complete cache if a new comment has been posted. I don't recommend enabling this option unless you're making use of icons that show maybe how many comments a post has, as you can see right here. This would not be updated if a new comment is published. The downside though is if your website actively receives a lot of comments and a lot of visitors, you're going to be triggering a lot of cache purges. So it's not something you should really ever use. In fact, showing comment counts doesn't do much for you at all. So I recommend that you never enable this option unless the comment count being incorrect truly bothers you that much. After that, we have the pre-compression of cached pages. This says it needs to be disabled if the decoding fails in the web browser. Essentially, if you have this option enabled and you visit your website, for instance, and it spits out a bunch of odd characters and it's just a white screen with a bunch of text, that typically happens when a file is being double compressed. So it's when you're trying to serve a gzip of a gzipped file and then it fails to decode properly. This is going to vary wildly depending on server configuration and your host. This site is on SiteGround. 
So I'm going to enable it and see if it works. It looks as if everything works just fine and it's being served pre-compressed. You might be wondering what the advantage is for, to this and it's relatively simple. If the file is being compressed before being sent to the user, it reduces the amount of resources the server has to send. Meaning when your page is cached and it's already cached as a gzipped file, the server doesn't need to dynamically cache uh, gzip each of the cached files as they're being sent to your user. So you'll see lower CPU usage, especially if you have a really large website. Then there's the create an additional cache version for WebP image support. I don't like this method of WebP support. Um, if you have the Optimus or U Image Optimizer plugin, this will just create a separate cache for browsers that support WebP images. The problem isn't even with this option, it's just the way that it works. Using Cloudflare CDN, for instance, where it'll serve WebP version of your images automatically and doesn't need re to rewrite the URLs is the best way of handling it. The easiest way though of integrating it is just to use Optimus short pixel U image optimizer and let them take care of it. If you have Jetpack installed and you're using the image CDN, then you don't need to enable this option. If you're not making use of WebP images from any of those plugins, don't check this option. Finally, clear the complete cache of any plugin has been upgraded. This is a hit or miss option. Sometimes plugins that have direct consequences to the front end will not trigger a cache purge. In an ideal world, the cache would be completely purged on every single update. But depending on your website scale, this may not be a very good system to have in place. But for most websites, go ahead and check this option. Then there's the cache exclusions. Um, one thing that I really dislike about this plugin is the exclusions tab is really small and that goes for all the exclusions they don't they don't have a lot of space so you'll just be writing and writing and writing if you need to exclude or include new items um, essentially though if you ever want to get a post ID which is the number WordPress associates with that post you can go to it by going to say the post menu and then these are all auto generated from newspaper as you can see post equals 310 310 in this case is the post ID and this can be done for any post type even pages and you just copy that URL and you can paste it in here Then you can exclude based on regex, which regex doesn't need a lot of explanation. But for instance, they have this example right here. If it's 2018 or the URL contains test in it, then it will be bypassed. I don't recommend messing with this option unless you understand regex. And even if you don't, there are some online generators that can help you. But for most use cases, using post IDs is the easiest way to go. With the red checks matching cookies that should not, that should cause the cache to be bypassed. Essentially, by default, the cache enabler plugin will bypass the page cache for these following cookies. The post pass, which is a password protected post after you've inserted the password the logged in cookie, the cookie WordPress assigns to you when you log in, or the comment author, which is the cookie that you're assigned when you've published a comment on that post. However, if you're making use of WooCommerce, it offers a suggestion on how to also exclude that. 
As you can see, if you were to copy this, it would exclude the same default ones below, but also WooCommerce items in the cart. So if you've added an item to the cart, it will be excluded and WooCommerce sessions will be excluded. Sessions are assigned at around the same point, so it's good that they're excluded. Cache inclusions, you can, again, you can, you can use regex to include specific types of get attributes. Um, commonly, like how it says right here, uh, if you're using UTM in the URL, it will by default cache those because oftentimes query strings especially are bypassed when it comes to page caching and it wants to be able to handle the ones that you are adding. So if you're running a UTM, don't worry, this will work. Same thing with Facebook. The Facebook click should still work. You will not bypass the cache. And this, should rem this shouldn't need configuration. If you find yourself needing to add something here, there's probably something else going wrong. Finally, there's cache minification, which is incredibly basic. It's a simple line remover for the document. So the cache minification will only compress inline HTML and inline JavaScript. I have enabled the HTML to show you. So we're gonna go to the website in incognito mode. And if I access this, and now I'm gonna reload it. So now the page has been cached, and as you can see, it's compressed the HTML quite well. The one thing that it hasn't done is compressed the, a lot of the inline JavaScript, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, but I suspect it will break something on this theme. And just for reference, with the HTML being minified, we have 296 lines where if it's not enabled, we have 2,367. HTML inline JavaScript will now be compressed. I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna run it one more time. And now it's two lines because it injects its little debug information there to say that it's been cached and okay as i suspected there is broken content the javascript is probably malformed and in situations where you run into this it's just best to disable uh, javascript compression it says td block is not defined what it's probably gone ahead and done is broken a lot of inline JavaScript that probably declared the TD block variable. It looks like it's declared here. More or less, the minification for HTML is almost never going to break something. If you're trying to squeeze performance out though, enable HTML and inline JS compression. I do wish that it would minify inline CSS because a lot of themes still add CSS that's dynamically compiled into the document instead of into its own CSS file, which is just a bad habit. But when it's enabled, it works. And that is the total guide on how to configure the cache enabler plugin. If you have any questions about the plugin, you can feel free to ask me below, or you can contact the KeyCDN team on the wordpress.org forums. I'll include a link to the plugin in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much for watching.